right word level uh, because though your focus is at word level because you are teaching um, uh, in a context uh, automatically students are learning sentence structures number 1 sentence structures number 2 sentence types automatically right for example i studied uh, sslc in a certain year students are learning an important and complex sentence structure there i subject studied verb sslc object what did you study svo where did you study in so and so school so adverbial so svo a an important sentence structure student has learned by learning that sentence in the context so this is how this is the advantage of uh, you know applying this method so to lay foundation to lay basic uh, vocabulary and basic sentence making this can be very very useful this will definitely work but then it is only time taking so what do you think what about you, you do you think uh, you can use this this will work yes do you think yes you can use this yes, method sir, sir. yes, yes. Yes. Very good. Yes. Yes. So now let's move on to a sentence level grammar aspect. Now, as I said, um, functional grammar like this cannot be applied to all. Yes, Anuradha Madam, it takes long time, which is true, but it is worth. It is worth because uh, uh, this is where you are laying foundation. You are giving students a room for expression. You are preparing them for real life communication skills, right? So uh, this requires, uh, you know, this is what you need to prioritize. Reduce the time that you spent on, uh, you know, explaining the content. I mean, content, your poems, your lessons, all this is your major content, right? Reduce the time on the content. Rather, give more time. For example, if you have a four-page story. reduce that four page story to one page which is fine that's not a problem because our stories are just context for language learning as long as you are teaching language in other ways uh, you know the stories are not that uh, important right yes it's it's not only your patience <laughs> that's true your patience is not the factor alone many teachers are worried like i don't have time where do i do where do i find time just find time see where the time most of the time is going on where the formalities are reduce cut down on those formalities and then spend time and moreover students will love to take part in these kind of activities your classes will become interesting because you are making them talk about themselves their friends their family members their real life so students will be eagerly waiting for your classes because you are connecting everything with real life right yes so these are some bird level examples uh, next is uh, we'll we'll take a sentence level example now in sentence level grammar uh, you know sentence types we have discussed i mean you know because that's very basic and uh, sentence structures also we have discussed like now in this methodology as you have seen because you are teaching them uh, in sentence context sir uh, Uh, sentence structures and the sentence types are automatically learned but even then a sentence types is something that you can teach integrated with the tenses integrated with the tenses so that we will see now when it comes to sentence level grammar <coughs> the foremost uh, first and foremost important thing is tenses tenses and sentence types so you cannot teach these two separately you should not also in reality most of the times outside uh, many teachers teach these two aspects uh, separately for example tenses and sentence types they teach separately but the best uh, way to learn or teach these is in an integrated fashion so that uh, we will see now because once you establish a strong foundation in tenses that can really do wonders Gram grammar point of view for your students because every sentence that we make in speech or in writing belongs to a particular tense or follows a tense pattern. We cannot make a, a a sentence in English without following tenses. I hope all of you agree with me. Yes, if you can lay a strong foundation in tenses to your students, 
half of their mistakes will just disappear believe me right if your students can learn this properly formally functionally half of their grammar mistakes will just disappear simple because every sentence that we make uh, you know follows a tense pattern all right so that's why tenses you know becomes very very important so next step so if i as a teacher high school teacher if i have to plan tenses functionally uh, a sentence level grammatical item that's why tenses i have chosen tenses because tenses is connected with the uh, uh, not only tense is important because every sentence uses tense that is number one reason number two every other grammatical sentence level grammatical area is connected to tenses i hope all of you are aware of this right i mean you are teaching high school grammar so i am sure all of you are aware of this tenses is an area which is connected to every other grammatical area sentence level grammatical area take parts i mean uh, degrees of comparison take active passive voice take reported speech yes or no it is connected with every other so uh, if you you cannot teach active passive voice to students perfectly you can never teach uh, if your students don't understand tenses same thing applies to reported speech you can never leave you can never teach them reported speech perfectly unless your students understand tenses properly yes or no do you agree yes so that is why yes sir uh, exactly right yes you need to spend a lot of time with tenses this should start uh, somewhere around 6th to 7th class onwards you have to start laying this foundation on tenses one by one taking one tense by you know tense so now in this session remaining time i will show you i will talk about if you are teaching something like tenses planning how can you do it functionally okay again so first uh i mean every tense has only one function usually but there are some function tenses which have multiple functions and out of that one of the most complex is simple present why do i say complex um yeah complex not by the sentence structure because it has multiple variations multiple verb forms multiple variations multiple functions most of the tenses have only one function for example past tense take past tense what do we use past tense for past tense is used to talk about past actions that's it there are no variations or uh, i mean there are not too many functions but present tense is has uh, basically in terms of uh, uh, verb forms there are three variations so first i am planning now you see this is how i plan because when i plan i need to plan with proper knowledge clear knowledge so when it comes to simple present tense there are three types of uh, statements number 1 first one i am a student this is what state of being for state of being in present tense we use only is am are verbs right we use only is am are verbs nirupama says my audio is echoing is it uh, is it true is my voice echoing no sir no 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 sir no sir sir no sir it's clear only Yeah, dear Mr. Madam. Uh, yes, usually these kind of problems uh, are problem at your end. Maybe you know your settings or try to re-log in if the problem continues. Yeah, coming back to the tense topic. Yes. So first, you should know as a teacher that when it comes to present tense, there are three variations. Like first one is state of being, where we use only be verbs: I am, you are, we are, he is, she is, etc. so what is the uh, function of these statements when when a present tense uh, sentence takes is am or it is it is not an action but it is state of being okay next is uh, possession present tense uh, possession so we use have verbs again the verb is changing that's why i'm calling this as a variation right so have have has had have forms are used for possession this is one variation another variation because the verb is changing you see the verb is changing and it is present tense only right next the third one is action so these three variations means you have to present one at a time all these three variations should be taught to the student and then one at a time so let's say first i'll i'll move from i mean common sense method is we move from simple to complex so start with the simple like state of being 
let your students learn state of being how to express state of being correctly and then you go to possession and then you go to actions expressing actions in the present tense so now my target is state of being so i will take sentences you know this is this is so in state of being this is your target this is your objective first your student should learn how to express positive sentences in present tense see we are we are still focusing on present tense in present tense in state of being i have focused on state of being in state of being step by step first my objective is i'll help my students make positive statements positive or affirmative sentences no right so affirmative or assertive assertive sentences in assertive sentences there are two type affirmative and negative so first this is positive next geeta is not tired negative so this in this we just add not and uh, how do you make a yes or no question for a state of being same auxiliary But, comes to the <coughs> front is geeta tired and if you want to make a wh question how is geeta yes sri devi madam you wanted to ask something sir i want to give answer only that's it <laughs> oh okay all right yeah yeah no i am i'm just showing you these 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 are you know when you when when you say student uh, i mean you are teaching present tense student has to learn all these uh, sentence types uh, in in the present tense first student should learn uh, first they should be exposed of course exposed exposure meaning and then practice so geeta is tired geeta is not tired he is geeta this is just for our understanding i am just showing you what are the things that should flash in your mind while planning your class so this this is how the sentence types is covered in tenses integrated so my first target is positive sentences again so if it is see is am are is my target is am are is my target so is am are how do you start again where do you start do you start with is do you start with am do you start with are again start from simple so i am so your students should talk about i am and then some suitable words should follow so uh, in the pronouns case when your focus was on pronoun you you focus like i am suman i am 18 years i am in 6th class those basic details you have already covered there there also i am uh, students have practiced so here you know use something more something higher like for example describe yourself introduce some adjectives because i am can be followed by nouns or adjectives so use some describing words where students describe themselves use introduce these adjectives and then let them use a suitable word to describe themselves of course you need to establish the meaning here i am not going to do that in the class in the real class because i am only showing you a process demonstrating a process so if it is a real class i'll explain one by one simple what do you mean by simple what do you mean by active what do you mean by responsible what do you mean by talkative right come on go go ahead and describe yourselves right right now whoever is there you can describe yourselves using these adjectives i am simple active rest for example i i am simple okay i am simple yeah can you use the chat box or the microphone and then you i am responsible it. you are mary is responsible wonderful next use you can use the chat box also i am simple okay. i am friendly arundhati is also simple like me okay very good i am a teacher thank you sir i am active <laughs> i am friendly i am reserved i am reserved which is here to describe yourself Okay, can I? I am friendly. I am happy. Thank you, Ramana. I am happy. Okay. I am happy. 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 I you are reserved okay swarnalata is reserved i am responsible okay 
right i am not responsible i am active i am active i am active yes i am talkative okay i am talkative you are talkative gangadhar is talking. i am not talkative I am, yeah <laughs> i am responsible you are responsible sucharitra is responsible okay nirupama is raised hands why i am friendly you are friendly okay you are friendly good okay now we'll stop see uh, this is one way where student my student is expressing state of being about himself okay now when one of my student says i am talkative i am reserved right at the same time you see here state of being means student should be able to use am is are now am students are comfortable another another variation is I mean variation means another meaning is for example where are you right now when you express state of being this is also one uh, kind of different meaning for example where are you i am at home i am at market i am at school this is your location so this is another context context for practice you should not mix up you should clearly segregate meaning wise though the structure is same so where are you right now for example all of you are uh, at different places some of you are at home some of you are at school come on tell me your location where are you or you can I be outside i am at school i am at home sir i am at home okay i am at home sir i am at school you are at school okay i am at home you are at home fine i am at school i am at school okay arundhati is at school amala is at home i am at home rao is at home bagyashri is also at home <laughs> yeah now you see the advantage of this method is you are not focusing on the preposition at but students have learned automatically how to use at for home and at uh, school you got the point so this is the advantage of this method because you are teaching in a context fixing in a context whatever is suitable in that context students automatically learn through usage through these natural <coughs> so once this process is over now only remember you have only given them practice in state of being that to only am now students should use are students also should use is now the same sentences let others talk about these sentences for example see arjunan said uh, i am at home now all the students in the class when arjunan says i am at home of course here this is online class so some of you are using chat box some of you are doing audio but in the real class each student has to stand up and give me the answer so let us say arjunan uh, said i am at home now immediately i have to introduce how to talk about others state of being right so when arjunan says i am at home all the students should say he is at home if it is oh, boy if it is girl she okay so if shri devi madam where are you i am at the, i am in vijayawada sir okay okay no at home or at school at home sir just now i am at home now at as soon as shri devi says i am at home all the class the entire class 30 40 members sir i will ask now students tell me where is shri devi you tell me where is shri devi please at home yeah she is at home she is at home okay shri devi is at home or she is at home third person singular sir yes third person singular i am not telling this is third person to students i am not going to tell this is third person so he is nothing yes sir just she is and he is that's it i am giving an opportunity i am creating an opportunity where students talk about he is and she is. so this is how this is how i can create a, a, you know functional context where without even taking a single uh, what you call technical word okay now but but remember after all this process students have only learned how to make positive sentences in state of being remember there are negative sentences there is auxiliary question there is wh question so it's a long way that's why i said you should start doing these things right from 6th standard and 7th standard okay so if if i have to do negative i'll use the same process now see we'll go back to activity 1 describe yourself now you said what kind of person you are for example some of you said i am simple i am active now select an adjective that doesn't apply to you now, i am not active 
Yes. So you will write the target sentence on the blackboard. For example, I I will I'll start. With, uh, one minute. One minute, ma'am. Yeah. See, I'll start with myself. See, I am the teacher in the class. So I will say. See, what did I say? I am simple. Okay, I am simple. Um, and then I'll say I am not talkative. I am not talkative. Right. So I am not talkative. Explain if necessary that meaning in mother tongue. Right. So means I don't talk much. Explain all this meaning in mother tongue. So my sentence is I am not talkative. So select an adjective which doesn't apply to you from this category. Okay. If you think uh, all the students, all these are positive, creates another category. Create another category where students are likely to say I am not this, I am not that. Okay. Now, okay. Deepa says I am not kind. Go ahead. Give your sentences. What is your sentence? Asha says, uh, I am not talkative. Chanchaya says, I am not friendly. Very good. Uh, and Chakravarti says, I am not talkative. Janardhan says, <laughs> I am not innocent. Nobody I am not sir. Janardhan, sir. <laughs> right. I am not an artist. You are not artist. Okay. Yes. You, you are giving me free responses, which is fine. But in the class... If my students don't have enough vocabulary, this is what I have to do. I will prepare the fixed list and then you will say, I am not reserved. Yeah, Prakash says, I am not passive. Good. Mamta says, I am not talkative. Adam Shafi. I am not talkative. I am not I'm poor, not, sir. I am not, not responsible for that incident. I am <laughs> okay. not responsible for that incident. For that incident, okay. Uh, I am not reserved. You are not reserved. Okay. Badigar says, I am not arrogant. Mary says, I am not talkative. Uh, Samson says, I am not reserved. Gita says, I am not active. Very good. Nirupama says, uh, I am not interested. I am not reserved. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Now. I am, I am not simple. Okay. You are not simple. Fine. I am not talkative. Okay. Now. See. See. Now, in your planning, if you if you look, if you analyze so far, what has the child learned? The child has learned overall number broad objective is present tense. In present tense, next subcategory is state of being. I am focusing on state of being. In state of being, again, first students have learned how to make positive statements. Next students have learned functionally how to make negative statements. Again. Same process now make students talk about others. For example, Vagesha said, I am not irresponsible. So now make students say about Vagesha. Say Vagesha is... Vagesha is not responsible. Is not irresponsible. Right? Nirupama says, I am not reserved. So now all the students will say, she is not reserved. So is, is is being used again in a negative sentence. In a negative sentence also, first person third person you are covering. Right? Now, if you notice, I have not given sentences with you. I have given first person I, I have given third person he, she. I have not included you so far. Can anybody tell me why? After I, I have directly gone to he, she, third person. I have not used the second person. Can somebody think and... It is plural, sir. It is plural. We use... No, you, you was also singular. singular, no. Also singular as well as plural, singular sir. Singular as well as plural. You stands for singular as well as plural. Yes. And directly it refers to the students, sir. Yes, it refers to the students. So, can you tell me why I did not introduce any context where my student gets an opportunity to make a sentence using you? Can somebody think and tell me? Okay, it's not about Concord. Uh, Prabha Madam, it's not Concord. Because if it is Concord, I takes am, but he shakes is. So he itself, the variation is there. Concord, right? Agreement is changing. So if I gave he with is, why not you with are? So that is not the problem. Okay. So without second person, why did I go to third person? We don't have much time. So uh, let me give you the answer. See, in real life, when you make statements, you can make a sentence about yourself. For example, I am rich, I am poor, I am simple, I am talkative. Okay. Next. 
you can also make a statement about a third person he is ravi he is 6 uh, years old or he is 15 years old or he is simple he is reserved etc but in real life if i go to somebody i mean if i have to begin a sentence sir, with you it means i am talking to that person that person is in front of me only then i'll use you right so in real life do we go to the second person opposite person and say you are ravi you are a student you are six years old do we make such kind of sentences no sir you are from hyderabad you are from Vizag. Why? Because all these that student already knows. Already knows. Already knows. So that kind of sentences we don't make. So you is not very important while making sentences. Sentences means assertive sentences. Assertive sentences. It is not very, very important. Where is it important? You becomes important in questions. Rather than making statements about a second person you, you is used more for questions. We ask questions rather than you are tired. That fellow knows if he is tired, he knows that he is tired. You are six years old. You are from so and so place. Why? I mean, no need. We don't, there's no need to communicate or make such sentences. Right? So it's not about grammar here. It's about meaning and usefulness. So there's no need to make statements for second person. Second person becomes important in a uh, point of view of questioning. So right now, my students have learned, got practice in first person, uh, sorry, uh, uh, positive sentences, negative sentences in state of being. Now my next target is to give them functional practice in making questions. So again, making questions See, I have covered Gita is tired, Gita is not tired. I have covered both these. Next, auxiliary question. First auxiliary, next WH. So, auxiliary question, auxiliary question begins with is, am, are. But again, as I said, all of them are not equally important. Because uh, am I, for example, am I, that's a rhetorical question. In real life, we don't ask questions to ourselves. So, that is not important right now for me, am. Again, is he, is she, third person, indirect questions. But direct questions are you. So if you is my target word, what will be the verb, auxiliary verb, are. So that are. is my target uh, question. So I will write just, I will write on the blackboard, are you dash, are you dash. So this is my target structure. Now my students have to make this question, not me. My students have to ask questions. So you have to introduce by two or three examples. Right? You ask them to ask you and then you can answer that question. And finally, it is the functional practice activity where the target structure is are you dash? Are you dash? So give the students freedom to ask any question to you. Because for students, who is you? Second person, the teacher. The teacher is in front of the students, right? So let them ask any question to you beginning with are you? Okay? So let them ask any. So now, right now, it is your turn. I am giving you that chance. Ask are you talkative? Any. Are you talkative? No. No, sir, I am not talkative. Krishna Rao says, are you, are you simple? I am, I am simple, sir. Uh, Krishna Rao says again, are you at home? I am not at home. I am at RI. Next, Mary. Are you, are you, are you reserved? Are you reserved? <laughs> uh, yeah, I am reserved. A little bit reserved. Next. Asha says, are you ill? No, I am not ill. I am not. Do I look like I am ill? I am not ill. Are you a doctor? Mamta, no, I am not a doctor. I am a... Are you team. active? Are you active? I don't know. You should tell me. Swarna Lata <laughs> Mahanam. <laughs> you are so active, sir. Uh, are, are you friendly? Are you friendly? Yes. Are you yes, a doctor? Or are, are you a reserved doctor? person? I am not Are you a reserved doctor. person? I am Are not, you not lover? I am reserved for some people. I am some people, yes. <laughs> uh. Sir, are you a reserved person or are you reserved person? Which one is right, sir? Are you reserved is fine, sir. Reserved person, no need. Are you reserved? Enough. Are you reserved person? Actually, not need. Are you reserved? That's enough. Adjective. Okay, okay Sarita is asking, are you a good are person? You, 
Are you joyful person? No, madam. I am not a good person. I am a bad person. Sarita, madam. Excuse me, sir. Are, are you, you joyful person? Are you? Joy nature lover. Are you a nature lover? Are you yes. joyful I, person? I love nature. Yes, I am a joyful person. Are you friendly? Are you friendly? Yes, I am friendly. Are you feeling free? Are you feeling free? No. Do you feel free? Do okay. you? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because feeling we don't use in ING form. Do you feeling comfortable? No, 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 no. Right now, do is not our target. R only R because I had to yes. correct the mistake. I said. Uh, Are you happy? Are you happy? Yes, I am happy. Thank you. Are you sad? Are you sad? No, I am not sad. Do I look like I am sad? <laughs> no sir no no <laughs> are you satisfied just are you satisfied i mean with what i am satisfied yes with our what? responses sir okay yes yes of course you are giving me wonderful responses okay. are you comfortable with our questions yes i am comfortable I am comfortable because right now my target is making my students. Uh, this is just a demonstration, okay? So I am giving you a task, and you are giving me wonderful questions. That's all. I should be happy. There are no right or wrong questions. <laughs> are you getting bored? No, I am not getting bored. Surya Prakash sir says, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> so. <laughs> Yes, sir. I am a crazy person sometimes. Surya Prakash, sir. Sir, are you enjoying time? teaching? Yes, of course, of course. Hmm. Sir, here ink form will come, sir. Uh, are you right? enjoying teaching? Are you in? Yeah, are you enjoying teaching? No, in the sense. Uh, again, there also uh, simple present is suitable than present continuous. You actually ask that sentence in question in present continuous, right? Do Anything general should be in how, simple how present. So do, you, do you enjoy teaching rather do than enjoy? are you enjoying teaching? Yes, sir. Okay, right. So this is how this is how I give opportunities for students to ask me questions. So you. You make yourself a subject and then let uh, your students give you. But initially, as I said, you have to establish the structure. Are you? Dash. Uh, identify some adjectives. Identify some nouns. Give them examples so that they know how to make those questions, etc., etc. If your students are average, above average, then you don't have to give any words. Just say, are you? Dash. Ask me any question beginning with are you dash, just like I did it with you, because you are adults. But if the students are below average, then what you have to do, you have to create a substitution tables. First column R, second column you. Next, uh, third column, all possible phrases. For example, some adjectives, are you ready, are you talented, are you smart, some adjectives. And then some nouns, are you driver, are you a teacher, are you this... You, you are actually supplying the details if the students are weak. Now, all the students have to do is just combine are you with one of the phrases and ask you a real question. And see, I could have just kept quiet. I was answering your questions. Why do you think I was answering the questions? I could have just said, okay, make questions. But I was answering each and every question. Why? Why do you think I was answering each and every question of yours? In order to encourage the students to come with response. Yeah, in order to encourage number one, but more than that, I am converting yes, this into real the... communication. By answering Motivate every question, them. I am converting it into yes. For example, I am, I am sir, raising sir, a conversation. In order to make them respond to the teachers. Exactly. See, if I don't answer, Students' questions are going to become mechanical questions because they are, see, in real life, when you ask a question, somebody has to answer it, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Otherwise, yes. see, nobody makes questions just for the sake of making questions. That's a mechanical activity. So, in order to not, in order to make it meaningful communication, I am answering your questions. 
question. So the more I answer, the more information I give yourself about me, students would be motivated. Students would love to know more things about the teacher, right? So this is the opportunity for them. They would love to ask you all kinds of crazy questions. Doesn't matter. Don't get mad at them. Don't get wild at them. If you don't want to give real answer, give them a... a <laughs> Give them a false answer. But then answering the question is very, very important because you're making it communicative. You're making it meaningful. You're making it active, right? You're making it conversational. Yes or no? So that's why. When it comes to making questions, this is how you need to, you know, plan. So this is... Yes, sir. So now, if I analyze my entire process, so far what have I done? I have helped my students learn. Uh, I have helped my students learn uh, present tense, in present tense, state of being, in state of being, uh, positive sentences, negative sentences. And then how to ask questions. So one now, now one variation is over. Next, I will go to another variation. Same process. Possession, right? Because uh, in possession, we use have verbs. So this is another variation. The same process. First one is I have. Positive sentence means students have to talk about their possessions. Students have to talk about others' possessions. Same process. Talk about your possessions. I have a car. I have a bicycle. I have this. I have that. Next, let make them talk about others' possessions. He has a car. She has a car. Geeta has a car. Ravi has a car. Next, let them talk about negative possessions. Means what they don't have. For example, I don't have a bicycle. Right? I don't have a bicycle. So what do you not have? Talk about something that you don't have. Students would love to talk about their possessions. Something that they have. Something that they don't have. Next, questions. Again, process is same. Questions. When it is questions, you be the subject. Students should ask you questions. Do you have dash? This is how you ask a question when it comes to possession. When it comes to possession, students, this is the structure. So do you have, ask, I mean, any, any question beginning with do you have? Come on, go ahead. Ask me your questions. Do we have a car? Do you have a laptop? Do you have a laptop? Yes, of course I have a laptop. I am conducting... Do you have an umbrella, sir? Do you have an umbrella? <laughs> yes, sir. Arjunan, sir, I have an umbrella. I have two umbrellas. Next. Do we have a... Do you have, do you have a smartphone, sir? Do you have? Do we have a smart, smartphone? Yeah, yeah, I have a smartphone. This do you have a spectacle, sir? Yes, of course. Uh, who, who asked that question? Sir, I am Janakar, sir. Can't you see my spectacle, sir? Yes, thank ask? you, sir. Yes. Sir, Janardhan yes. asking. Okay, yeah. Sir, do you have a car? No, I don't do have a car. Do you have a Benz car? Sir. sir. My God, I don't have a car only. Sir. You have a Benz car. Come on, sir. Do sir, you sir. You sir. Have a rich man. Sir. sir, I can do also ask, sir. Don't you have an umbrella? Don't you have an umbrella? Yes, that's a negative question. Even do if you, you have want a house, negative, first to teach positive and then negative. Do you have an umbrella? Is a positive question for information. Do Don't you, you have, have an umbrella? Sir? Is not for information. Remind you, it is not for information. It is for confirmation. A negative question. Do is you like, have a class now? Sorry, do you have a? Yes, I have a class at three thirty. Three thirty. 
Three thirty, I have a class. I have another class. Do you have a house? Do you have a house? Yes, I have a house. Do you have children, sir? Do you have children? Do you have children? Yes, I have children. You are now unmuted. Do you have a positive mind, sir? Do you have a positive mind, sir? Do you have a positive mind, sir? Do you have a positive mind? Yes, I have a positive mind. Okay, Ravi Kumar is asking, do you have an account in ICICI Bank? <laughs> no, sir, I don't have an account in ICICI Bank. You are now unmuted. Sir, do you own a house? Do you have a house? Do you have a house? No, no, no. You own a house? No, no, no. So, you can ask me. सर वीरा सर वीरा क्या कर रहे हो कैन यू क्लोज योर डोर एको इन एको इन यू आर नाउ म्यूटेड यू आर नाउ अनम्यूटेड या सो स्टूडेंट्स विल नॉट आस्क मी दैट क्वेश्चन बट इफ समबडी हैज आस्क्ड मी एज अ डाउट डू यू ओन यस डू यू ओन आल्सो इज अ वर्ब व्हिच इज यूज्ड टू एक्सप्रेस पोसेशन बट दोस आर ऑल मल्टीपल पॉसिबिलिटीज राइट नाउ बेसिक functions you are teaching so your focus should be on the verb have that's it later let your students learn own or any other uh, verbs that are used as they learn more and more vocabulary they will know how to replace uh, you know one verb with uh, another verb right so this is uh, how they will ask you questions yes so now action possession uh, sorry state of being last is action you see so actions they need lot of practice because uh, uh, we we have lot of actions and we we talk about lot of daily routine etc etc now again when it comes to actions what kind of actions are represented in the present tense first this this is your you know this should be your homework lot of different kinds of functions are there a grammar book will list 10 different functions when it comes to simple present tense more than 10 sometimes so you need to prioritize your objective your duty is not to teach everything in that no see for example proverbs universal truths there is no need to teach these because your students don't use them in real life right universal truths nobody uses universal truths have you ever heard anybody say universal truth to anybody else have you some rises in the east Sometimes except in english east. grammar classes have you ever heard have you ever used or spoken about a universal truth in real life to somebody for example do you know surya prakash sir do you know that sun sets in the east bhagyashri madam do you know <laughs> do you know that the earth revolves some around rises the in the east sir have you heard these kind of i mean no because everybody knows them that's why we call them universal truths that's all so think about actions or functions which are connected to their real life most important ones so for example uh, most important functions in present tense are daily routine and habitual actions so take one at a time so you have to make students talk about their daily routine for example when do you wake up this is your target waking up is a daily routine right now this is the focus so what should a student say i wake up at 6:30 first you encourage them to ask this question to you right students can you ask this question to me when do you wake up do you know the meaning of wake up establishing the meaning of that verb now once students know the meaning of this okay so i wake up at 6:30 okay now geeta tell me when do you wake up geeta geeta see Yes, Surya Prakash sir. When do you wake up? You are now unmuted. Yes. Now Surya Prakash sir is my my slow learner. I gave the structure. I wake up at six thirty. Surya Prakash sir has typed I at six o'clock. So he is my slow learner. So I have to focus on slow learners like him. Okay, sir. I. wake up at 6:30 that's right krishna rao says i wake up at 6 o'clock correct arundhati i wake up at 6:30 you see 
in this context the student is automatically learning how to use at for time specific time no. not teaching it separately yes yeah. so now yeah surya prakash says i wake up at 6 o'clock very good i wake up at 5:30 i wake up at 5 i wake up at 5:30 oh mamta wakes up at 4:30 wonderful uh bibi wakes up at sir, 6 sir i wake up at 5:30 Yes, you wake up at five thirty. Wonderful. Okay. Now, see. Sir, excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, here at the end of the sentence, six thirty a.m. or p.m. We no need to write that. The It's understood now because nobody wakes up at six thirty p.m. in real life. Though six thirty without a.m. p.m. can cause confusion. Sir, Common sense is that when you are talking about wake up. Yes. You don't have to mention AM or PM. By the biology, normal grammar, sir. So, so normal grammar. I mean, you can use ignore, I, that. We can couple. ignore minimal these things in the formal grammar. That is the that is the basic difference between functional grammar and formal grammar. The formal grammar insists on AM or PM, but whereas functional grammar, we can ignore these things. Sir, the sir, see, minimum. forget about these words: formal grammar, functional grammar. This more than this, sir. You know how you should think is. is the context enough to make somebody sense to somebody in real life if i tell somebody i wake up at 6:30 does any common sense person understand will any person understand that is what you have to think will it yes. interfere yes. meaning will it affect meaning forget about form, formal functional grammar it's not about that it's about the meaning as i said 6:30 waking up if you use your common sense anybody will understand that you don't have to mention pm of course if you want to use am fine there's nothing wrong you're just making uh, students to give more specific responses that's also fine it's not about right or wrong do we need it or we not we don't that's all now once your student says i wake up i wake up at 6:30 let all students now let's change the daily routine change the daily routine is given to For communication example, to go to bed so your next your next sentence is when do you go to bed then again your students will say i go to bed at write the target structure establish the meaning i go to bed at 10 o'clock i go to bed at 9 o'clock etc 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 so now make them talk about others daily routine he wakes up she wakes up because wake wakes up s form has to be practiced no same process that we followed previously right so again i can ask questions for example habitual actions these are daily routine next i'll go to habitual actions do you watch tv that's a habit so do you watch tv but when i ask such a question my student has to my student can give either a positive or a negative response so i have to introduce both so if you watch i say you say i watch if you don't watch i don't watch you watch tv sorry so do you watch tv Yes, sir. I watch yes, TV. Sir. I, I watch TV. TV. I don't watch TV. Once, once your students are available, I mean, familiar with the basic structure, go into more details. More details. For example, look at the next question in the slide. Do you read novels? Do you watch movies? Do you play cricket? Do you like fruits? Give them these kind of choice and let them frame questions. If question framing is your target, positive is over, negative is over. Now questions. Ask them. I mean. Uh, give them a choice to ask any question beginning with do you whether it is reading do you read do you play do you eat or do you like let them ask any question and then keep on answering their question so this is how this is how you can teach uh, tenses an area at sentence level grammar you know functionally so in this process i have not only covered tenses i have also covered sentence types right in each tense this is how students have to learn get practice in how to make first positive sentences next negative sentences next auxiliary questions and then finally comes the wh questions yes i hope it is clear for you so this much if you do properly students will get a strong foundation in sentence making process and if students can make sentences on their own that's wonderful right because see most of the time in sslc this is becoming the problem very lessons abdul razak you have to 
you have to make sure your mic is off sir you are talking to somebody else mr abdul razak okay so as i was saying uh, you know if if students can learn you know can make sense most of the time what is happening you are teaching your lessons beautifully they are understanding the stories but because they cannot make their own sentences they are not able to write uh, uh, their understanding in the exams that's why most uh, students fail so to be able to write minimum answers minimum you know essays uh, in the question paper that is minimum we are talking about minimum performance this sentence making is very very essential so this process if you lay the foundation students will definitely uh, you know be able to do minimum communication in uh, english yes so with this we'll stop uh, so Sir. later we'll continue in the next class so other things yes sir surya prakash sir Thank you.